Hello friends, I am Deepika Shrivastava, Assistant Professor in Department of B.Tech, Computer Science from Biani Group of Colleges, Kalwar. I am here to deliver a lecture on basics of operating system from the subject operating system. So here we go. First of all, we will discuss what is operating system. Operating system is basically a collection of programs that is it is a software. It is a software which is uh, which acts as an intermediary between a computer user and its hardware. I mean to say it acts as an interface. As an interface those programs collaboratively acts as interface between users and computer hardware. So, they, so that users can use the computer hardware very easily. We can say operating system is a governing, governing body. Governing body means it supervises each and every activity of a system. Operating system, it acts as resource allocator as well. Next, the concepts come functionality of operating system. Before that, we will see the architecture where the operating system actually resides in memory. Here comes the architecture. What's this? This is a main memory. Operating system resides in the upper portion of main memory, which is actually three fourth of sorry, I mean to say one fourth of whole main memory, and remaining three fourth memory is equipped is occupied by uh, equally sized blocks of memory where the user programs reside. Here the programs with priority are residing whereas here the user programs will reside. Okay, Moving on to this architecture we have application hardware and between connecting them we have operating system which makes hardware and applications to get interacted. Now we will talk about functionalities of operating system. First of all process management creation, maintenance, deletion, everything comes under of process comes under process management. Similarly, device management. Each and every peripheral attached to a system comes under device management. This is also the responsibility of operating system. Next is file management. Creation of file, deletion of file, searching of file, everything is the responsibility of operating system. Last is memory management. Memory allocation, memory reallocation, everything comes under memory management goals of operating system goals of operating there are basically two goals of operating system these are convenience and efficiency convenience convenience so that we could use it very easily for convenience, the operating system design is like Windows, which is used, which is uh, used by layman's like us, so that we can use it very easily. Another goal of operating system is efficiency. Efficiency for the systems which need stability, like the programs running for 365 days want the system, the operating system to ha to have more efficiency, and those systems are like Unix in which a program can run for around 365 days. So both goals, I repeat once again, convenience, Windows operating system and efficiency, Unix operating system. Okay, now we will talk about the generations of operating system. First of all, sequential, sequential operating systems. Sequentials like punch cards, card readers, likewise. Those uh, sort of operating systems uh, were like only one process at a time enters the main memory, gets processed. But in this process, we can notice the computer sits idle. It has nothing to do. One, uh, like if one process is working inside the main memory, so during the input output, the CPU will sit idle. So in that case, we came into batch operating system. Batch operating system, what it basically does is, it takes the programs having common functions to do. Like we'll uh, take some set of programs which have some common functions to do. Those functions are grouped into a batch and togetherly sent into the main memory. So that there they will get processed and CPU will comparatively not sit idle. 
Next is multi programming. This is the best concept OS has ever introduced. Be multi programming will explain with the help of this diagram. Before the memory was not divided into such blocks, but now, in case in uh, as multi programming is introduced, the memory is divided into equally sized blocks where like if there are n number of blocks n processes could reside in main memory number one number two likewise n processes can simultaneously reside in main memory and get executed so that the cpu will not sit idle at all because if one process is under process another one is in the queue so computer will not get rest cpu will not get rest and it will continuously work so we'll have best of cpu utilization Last is real time operating system. Real time, oper uh, time operating systems are strictly time bound. We will say like real time operating systems are categorized into two types which are soft real times and hard real time systems. Soft real times uh, we can say a delay of one second, one uh, second is tolerable. Like in cases, in case of banking systems, if we do, uh, uh, if we do a withdrawal, then it's it is, it is to be noted, it is to be taken into account. It takes one second, it's okay, it's bearable. But in case of hard real time systems, like launching of missiles, it can it can't tolerate a, a single nanoseconds even. So hard time. Hard time operating, hard real time operating system, a uh, delay of one nanosecond is even not tolerable. It should be on time. That is all with the basics of operating system. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much for watching my lecture. And if you need more information regarding this topic, you can please visit the webs our website www.gurukpo.com. Thank you.